Hey YouTubes, polished aluminum finishes are a lot of work. Uh, I've had to daily drive this thing for the past two months because the truck's been down. And uh, now that I've reclaimed the garage, I've got it indoors to figure out exactly why it's stopped pulling like a raped ape. So what I've discovered, once again, with a little bit of boost leak testing, is that I've managed to blow up my intercooler and tanks again. There we go. A gigantic crack and hole is, I guess, from 29 pounds of boost. No fun. So I'm going to take the front end of this car off and yank the intercooler. Some of you guys haven't taken the front end of your car off before, and mine's already been hacked and chopped. There's a hidden bolt that is way up inside of there that holds onto the bottom bracket on the headlight. Now, there's not really any good way to squish your arm up in there to get to it, so what you really need to do is get an extension and a 10 millimeter swivel socket. I have a Craftsman in my toolbox. It's coming extremely handy over the years. I'll show it to you in a second. But that bolt can be a pain in the butt to get to. The only reason why you have to remove it is because if you've never taken the front bumper off of your car before, you have to take the headlights out in order to access two fasteners that are hidden up inside of this little crack here underneath the headlight. And those two fasteners can be a royal pain. So what I do after I've done this kind of job so that I don't have to remove the headlights in order to take the front bumper off, I've left out that part. And this is what it looks like. This is it right here. It's just a little piece of metal. It's got two plastic push fasteners that go through it and the bumper and the front fascia. And in order to take the front fascia off, you have to have those fasteners out. I haven't found any necessity in keeping them. Uh, in fact, it's just made the car easier to work on. And since I still have the front bumper assembly inside, it holds the front end in shape. So that doesn't really need to be tied down there. So I'm going to go ahead and take this thing off. But these are the tools I use. If you want to get all your tools together and uh, just get ready to rock and roll, basically, you need a, a Phillips head screwdriver. Stubby one helps if you have the, uh, if you have the wheels on the car. Um, there's a 8 eight millimeter or a 5 16th inch nut driver and that's good for taking off the intake and stuff like that. Um, we have this guy here that's just this helps take out the plastic fasteners along with that Phillips head and we've got the swivel extension I was talking about 10 millimeter swivel on the end of an extension so you can reach up inside of this hole and get to that fastener without too much difficulty. Of course I don't need to do that anymore. Um, this helps in tight quarters I guess. I'll probably use it for something in the job. And then I've got an 11 millimeter for the uh, which is the same thing as a 7 16th and I use that for all of my hose clamps and the 10 millimeter just in case I need something that doesn't swivel. So anyway that takes care of that and uh, I'm gonna get to work. Sometimes it's good to have a pick. Sometimes they come out bright and easily. When that happens, you just do that. These are the fasteners that take off the front bumper, and there's another one right back here. It's another thing that this thing comes in handy for. So you don't have to crawl up in there with the tool. Now you just have to take your light bulb out from the signal blanker and it takes care of the front bumper. That part's loose now. Just do the same thing on the other side. at this point that you'd have to remove the headlights there's a two bolts back here behind the headlight that hold that side of the light on you have one here 
and then you have the hidden bolt way up front underneath that piece. So you would remove those bolts and disconnect the electrical housing and at this point you'd be able to bend this down enough to be able to squeeze the headlight out through that panel and uh, that would free you up so that you could reach the rest of the fasteners that hold the front end on. You just got five bolts on top. Alright, then you just got to take the front bumper off. Now, I was talking about those fasteners before. There were two holes here in the front bumper that hold that big metal piece down and uh, with the headlights out you can get to the plastic fasteners that go through the bumper there. Once those pieces are off it lets go of the plastic part. So we're going to take the bumper off. I've got two bolts that hold my intercooler on. Here's the hole. Lovely. Now the reason I keep fixing this thing instead of replacing it is because it's a bona fide extruded tube core. This is a serious race core and it's more efficient than a standard tube and fin or bar and plate core. All the little fins on the inside increase the surface area making it better at transferring heat from the compressed charge into the air passing outside. These are pretty hard to find. If I had access to a foundry, I would have made cast aluminum tanks for it by now, but instead I keep trying to squeeze lemonade for an onion. Stay tubed!